what is going on everybody welcome back for another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about how you can take care of a baby bowfin if you happen to acquire some also if you happen to acquire some from jonasaquarium.com because at the moment there are some baby bowfin available i've had lots of people ask me over the years where'd you get your bowfin at well people here's your chance jonas aquarium has them for sale at the moment little bitty guys two inches also had a uh, comment uh, on one of my videos maybe it was a live stream where we were talking about the baby bowfin and uh the commenter uh asked you know if i could make a video to kind of describe how we took care of our bowfin uh mr bojangles is back here in this 150 right now he's probably 12 inches uh if you've been paying attention to the channel for a while we've had him for the last three years i believe uh and when we first got him he was two inches we got him from jonas aquarium um, so what I figured I'd do is I'd do this kind of live stream setup format type of video with my computer here on StreamYard, make it easy. We'll see how it goes, you know. So uh, what I want to do, though, is I'm going to share, share my screen real quick here so you guys can see this. These are some videos uh, on my channel here. Uh, back, uh, if you go to our shorts feed and look way back, you can see it. But here, let me play this video. So this is, this is Mr. Bojangles when he was very, very small, both of probably two and a half inches right here. You can see I have a pair of tongs right there and I actually feed him. I fed him almost exclusively his entire life uh, raw shrimp. So I buy raw shrimp from the uh, grocery store and I cut it up and you can see that's a pretty small piece right there that I fed him. Um, I, I pretty much fed him raw shrimp since he's been a baby okay. to the size he is now. Here's another video, him a little bit larger, same deal. So. Uh, my tip to you guys, if you're raising both in or you want to raise both in, get yourself some uh, aquascaping tongs like you see that I use here in these videos and start out uh, feeding them raw shrimp. I mean, you can do blood worms. Uh, they're probably going to come eating blood worms. You know, that's what they've probably been eating for the most part. Blood worms, in my experience, are only good for both in when they're very small. Uh, it seems like they quickly outgrow it and then what I've done with mine is just got them on the raw shrimp. So uh, that's that's okay. definitely my recommendation. Get a, get a pair of aquascaping tongs right. and some raw shrimp from your grocery store. Here's another video. This one he doesn't eat in the video. This one he's probably four inches long in this one. But start out, just cut little slivers of shrimp and feed them two, three times a day when they're real small. You know, two, three times a day when they're that small. And then as they get bigger, you can start feeding them more and you can kind of space those feedings out a little bit. Like I feel like when he was this size, I was feeding him once a day, maybe every other day, but I was giving him pretty good sized chunks of shrimp. As opposed to back when he was really small, when you've seen those videos, I was feeding him little slivers, but I was doing it on a daily basis or multi times in a day. So yeah, that's uh, that would be my suggestion for getting, getting started with a baby bowfin. Uh, obviously fr frozen blood worms are going to work out good. Get you some raw shrimp, cut it into little strips, grab the tongs and put it in there and give it a little action. Try to get, try to make that connection with the fish or fish is if you have multiples. And, uh, I think it helps kind of interact and build a, you know, build a uh, relationship with the fish cause it's going to be in captivity. So, to, so it's, a, it's a pet, but, uh, also you could use, uh, you could use worms, earthworms. I like red wigglers. I fed, I fed, uh, the bowfin quite a few red wigglers when he was small, even, even cut in half little pieces of red wigglers. And, um, when they're little like that, two, three inches, I always start mine out in a 20 long. That was how I did it. And I didn't start them out down here in the cold water fish room. This room, this fish room right now is pretty chilly, 61 degrees Fahrenheit down here. I started them out upstairs where it was like 68 or so, 70. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if that matters as much, but I was just I just wanted to make sure I did good with them. So I started them out in a 20 long, uh, sponge filter, nothing fancy, few plants. And uh, once he got probably about three, three and a half, four inches, I moved him into this 55 actually right here downstairs. And he stayed in that 55 until he was probably about six, seven inches maybe. And then I moved him into here and he's went from seven inches to about 12 inches, 11 and a half, 12 inches. He is now probably three years old. If you look back, you could look at the date on that video. I didn't do that, but it's been a while. We've had him a while. I don't feed him a whole lot, so he doesn't grow super fast, but, uh, yeah, 
I wanted to make a video. I think I did it. I don't think I left anything out. You know, they're they're a very really, really, really uh, simple. Should be a really simple fish to keep in captivity, but I feel like, and I've I know I've read, people have a hard time with both in when they're that juvenile stage to upwards of six eight inches. Getting them getting them through to that stage. So that's why I recommend feed them multiple times a day when they're really small and just pay a lot of attention to them. Keep them getting good and ha happy and healthy until they get upwards of six months or so, or uh, maybe in, you know closer to a year. Maybe you can six months, eight months. They'll get be, they'll be a decent size. You can probably kind of calm down and start feeding them a little bigger pieces less often. But yeah, nothing really, nothing really fancy. Uh, I believe they can even breathe air. So they can handle actually not real great water quality, but I've always kept mine in nice quality planted tanks. That's just the way I do it. So hopefully that answered all your questions. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to add them in the comments here below. I will definitely try to respond to them. I, should, I respond to all my comments. I try to respond to all my comments within 24 hours. So if you guys ever have any uh, any questions or anything like that, drop a, drop a question and I'll get back with you. So. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and we will catch y'all Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at the Coldwater Aquatics YouTube channel. We live stream, so see you guys later.